Good morning, San Diego. Welcome to Homefront. I am your co-host, Eve Nasby, with my other co-host. Is that right? AJ Brooks, co-host, co-host. Eve, it's great to be here. You're amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. We've got a great show. We have fantastic guests today. I know. Tell us about your guests. Well, from No One Left Behind, we have Amanda Maddie and Matt Mikowski. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know about Little Italy, and we know about Little Portugal. Uh, San Diego has a great history of welcoming immigrants and people that have come to this country. And El Cajon is also known as Little Baghdad. They're going to mm -hmm. talk to us about the teammates from Iraq and Afghanistan that are resettling in the San Diego area. That's Welcome back to the Homefront family section. Here in the studio, we have Matt Mikowski and Amanda Maddie from No One Left Behind. Guys, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So, No One Left Behind uh, invokes this sense of we don't leave people behind on the battlefield. And, you know, Matt, you came to this organization not with a veteran background, but because you had a passion for this project. Can you talk about it? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I really kind of got into it. Um, having seen what some of these guys go through in the media and I used to live in Baltimore so you know being around DC you see a lot of the plight that these guys face. Now when you say these guys you were an electrical engineer that correct. worked on systems that were used by the military three letter agencies in Iraq and Afghanistan. Correct correct yeah so you know I, I kind of from that side of things knew kind of a little bit what they're facing over there but you know when our guys came home um, these guys really didn't have a chance to and their families and they were really under a lot of pressure back in their homes from insurgents, the Taliban, Al Qaeda, um, when they found out when they found out that these guys were working with U.S. forces, obviously that puts them in a pretty pretty tough place. So this is the home front family section, and I think anyone who served, whether in garrison or combat, on a ship um, or at a base somewhere in the middle of America, understands that you get really close and you become family. And there isn't a, your guys and my guys when you're fighting the fights that we've fought. Now, right next to you, we have Amanda Maddie. Amanda, you're a, a veteran of Iraq. You're a Navy veteran, you're in the intelligence community, and your story's a little more personal. You went as a foreign affairs liaison officer, and you ended up getting more than ribbons from your deployment. Is that right? You also got a spouse. I did. I, I came home with an Iraqi from Iraq. <laughs> yes. And so I know firsthand uh, the sacrifices, you know, from being in country and seeing, seeing there, you know, personally. I know firsthand the sacrifices that these translators have made. They've bled on the battlefields with our soldiers and our Marines, um, and they're being systematically targeted, hunted, and killed by insurgent groups for their because of their service to and us. And that's still going on now in 2017. Yes, still in 2017. The invasion was in 03. You uh, deployed and served in 05, and that was during a period of time where anyone who was serving as an interpreter or translator was was being targeted and killed, and their bodies were being left in the street as if to say, do not help the Americans help our country. Yes, they were, like I said, systematically targeted, um, and they were considered traitors. Uh, the number one, they were considered turncoats, so the insurgents were after them personally to teach everybody a lesson. Do not work for the Americans. We will find you. We will not only kill you, we will go after your family. And when you talk about family, you and your husband now have two beautiful daughters, and you've made a life here in the United States. When, when you talk about this precedent of not leaving anyone behind, this is not just the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. This organization has a, a history and sort of a lineage that goes back to Vietnam. And I think as, as, a, as a country, this is, a, a, this is not just an American story. This is a story that's as old as warfare itself. You know, um, brides and partnerships and romance and friendship and, and connection go all the way back to the history of warfare. So in Vietnam, the most, most recently, we had mountain yards and uh, Vietnamese that helped us and we left them behind and they were targeted. And there was a program through the 70s, 80s, 90s, even through today, to try and bring them over and give them refuge. That's part of what you do still, isn't it? Correct, correct. I mean, that's a, it, there truly is a lineage between what happened then and a lot of the veterans that served in that war and then came back and saw those folks left behind. And, you know, Matt Zeller, our founder, really, you know, he was over there serving too, had his translator he wanted to get over. And really, it kind of speaks to that, that these guys fought together and bled on the battlefield together. And, you know, it hurts them to see these folks over there in harm's way. And because we promised them. We promised yeah, them that yeah. we would protect them, that we would protect their families if they served us and helped us out while we were over there. So then when they said, hey, I'm being targeted, what can you do for me? There was a brick wall. There was mm. no path for them to come to the United States. There was nothing that our military could do in country to protect these guys mm -hmm. in their homes. So there was this huge brick wall that literally had to be torn down and, and gotten over. So you guys are really in the business of getting visas and getting people an opportunity to be resettled. San Diego is America's finest city, and El Cajon has sort of become a little Baghdad in some ways. It's become a wonderful host community for people that want to build a new life. 
you guys help them get the visas to get here legally, but then you also help them with employment, starting jobs, starting businesses, entrepreneurship. The organization nationally has a great reputation, mm -hmm. but locally it's just a handful of volunteers that are trying to provide services to hundreds of people. Correct, correct. We have uh, upwards of getting close to 30 families now in the past year that we've started serving. We've you said only 30 been, families? 30 families, wow. yeah. And we've only been around really for a year about. And um, yeah, we, uh, no paid staff, we're all volunteers. And so, you know, we're always looking for more folks to help and, you know, help, you know, keep our promise to these folks. It's a labor of love. Mm -hmm. It is a labor yeah. of love. And you have a personal connection. And I think it's really touching, you know, when you start talking about family, the way that we connect, that you see people that help Americans as part of this extended family. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of veterans that volunteer with your organization, but there are a lot of people like yourself, Matt, that heard about the mission, wanted to do something and got involved. Definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, we're all Americans. We all love this country and the freedom and the, you know, the democracy we have here. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that these folks coming over see that same side. You know, we, we give them all the promises that we, we made to them, but also, you know, show them what our country has to offer and then we keep our promises. And they want to be self-sufficient. Right. Yeah, so exactly. it's not just yeah. about getting them over here and giving them handouts. They don't want to live off of handouts. They want to be self-sufficient. They want to work. They want to earn. And they want to support their families. Well, you know, with the exception of Native Americans, everyone here really is an immigrant story. And America is not just a place. It's, a, it's an idea. The idea that you can express your, your faith and your values in a way. And, and there's a place to do that. And you're, and you're giving a lot of people who have upheld those values an opportunity to do that. I know, I know that vehicles are an issue. If anyone wants to donate or get involved, can you tell us where to do that? Yeah, um, we have, uh, if you go to www.noonleft.org, um, you can donate, uh, and some of that money gets directly to our chapter if you do it through the San Diego uh, link. And, um, you know, they can contact me um, if they, anyone wants to help out, give physical donations, couches, anything sure. like that. Um, you know, we're more than happy to come on and pick them up for you. Whether it's money or time, there's lots of ways to get involved. Totally. Amanda, Matt, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your mission. I, I'm really happy you're here. And I think a lot of people learned something today. Thank Thanks for so having much. us. That's Matt Mikowski and Amanda Matty. Amanda's an author, and you can pick up her book, A Foreign Affair, on Amazon and online, here on Homefront. <laughs>